Hello, this is the second part of the 3D scanning video tutorial and it will only contain the live 3D scanning session using an iPhone Face ID sensor and Haggis 3D version 1.6 app. The scanning was done at the Applied Acoustics Department of the Chalmers University of Technology in Sweden. The subject of a scan is a Kemar binaural dummy simply because the dummy has no privacy concerns while human ears are as unique as fingerprints and can be used for biometric identification. You may notice that the dummy wears a tight swimming hat to demonstrate what needs to be done when scanning people with most haircuts. The hat will cause some difficulties in the next step, but hats are easier to deal with than the entirely unpredictable haircuts. Also, I'm using optional reference geometry frame, which I believe provides more confidence when using an iPhone for 3D scanning. But I'm quite sure the scanning could work without any added references as well. I would like to mention in advance that this almost unedited scanning sequence includes a couple of failed attempts, which can still provide a good educational example. If you want to see only the most important parts, then you can jump to the second base scan attempt and the second detailed scan attempt. Here we go. We're going to start from the back and go around. Uh, so we start with an overview like this and go. If it messes up a little bit, we go back. And grab some shoulders as well. And we'll start rotating around. I have all the time good view. Because I hold the phone as a selfie camera. And right now the phone is pointing at me, but you can't see me. If I do look down, I try to keep the reference geometry in the view anyway. You can also rotate the phone like this. It doesn't matter. And we continue. So I'm not taking a lot of close-up right now, even though I, I maybe should. As I bring in very close, I, I caught myself in view, which is not so good. So I try to keep my arms stretched out. If my hand is shaking a little bit, it doesn't matter. Now perhaps the important part, the face. Face is what we're going to use from this scan. So we also grab shoulders, just in case we want to use them afterwards. And don't forget to go a bit above to get the top of the head. Now it's complaining, so I'm trying to go back. I can't read the small text on the screen, but still. And also don't forget to take the area under the chin. Very easy to, to forget the area under the chin. You can even rotate a little bit of foam, doesn't matter. Now when we think we have a good grab for face and both ears, we continue. So we have one more ear to take. As you can see, this is in real time. I'm not speeding it up or changing it anyway. The audio is as it is because the microphone needs to stand at the bottom of the Kemar dummy. And we have a good view of reference geometry. We give it some time to collect data. As you can see, the algorithm is quite robust, so even though it loses tracking, it actually 
regains it quite nicely and we are almost done so as we know the back of the head is never that important because you will be editing the hair away or localization from the back is not that good anyway so we just grab the full head so that we don't have holes in the mesh but uh, we will replace ears with high quality scan afterwards and the important part is that the face is not too deformed and of course we care about the relative position of the ears because you really want to have interaural time difference to be correct so i think we are good but as you can see i'm still collecting a bit more data because if if the phone allows you it is not a bad thing now i'm trying to get a view from the top because it's easy to leave some holes at the top of the head uh, as you can see the tracking algorithm is struggling well maybe we'll just have to give it up and see what we got so now we save the scan and i'm going to click on the gallery here is the scan I'll rotate the phone, go to the export model to STL with our colors. Wait a little bit. And now you can click on view VR, view model non AR to see the result. So this is straight in a phone, no editing, you just saw live the recording process. As you can see, the mesh is maybe not the best the front looks a little bit distorted so i think i'll have to take another take to get it better and uh, we'll see how it turns out again so not always it works out sometimes it's better to be a little bit faster uh, sometimes it's better to be slower uh, you should really experiment a little bit so i think we can do one more try just to see if it works better so i go back back and start a scan again this time i'm going to go faster grab the shoulders So I'm starting from the back because back is the least important. If the phone messes up, I'm trying to, if the tracking messes up, I try to go back. And we don't forget to grab the view from the top. As you can see, it really doesn't like looking at this reference geometry. I wonder why, but that's how it is. So if I continue going off, it really doesn't like it, but if I return back it should recapture the position oh it did so we have tracking back and gone again so if the tracking gets lost too often maybe you should move slower maybe you should get a different point of view so that the algorithm gets other features to track. So remember, right now we're doing the overall rough scan. So this is not supposed to be perfect. It just needs to give you the general dimensions of the head and, and ear positions. We will attach high quality scan afterwards. As you can see, when you scan large surfaces, you accumulate errors. And don't forget to get a view of the top of the head and a view of under the chin. Very easy to miss. And we continue the last parts.
with practice this process gets more reliable but to be honest this is not a guaranteed process sometimes the scan will turn out bad and there's not much you can do about it you can zoom in you can basically zoom in means bring phone closer to get a better view because uh, clearly the closer the sensor is the better is the resolution this is especially important when you're going to scan the uh, the details on the ears so in this view i think we see both ears which is good and let's leave it and stop it here Now we go to the gallery, scan, export model to the STL. And view the model. So we have a bit of a hole behind the ear, but it doesn't matter at all. We have pretty nice face. I think I like it. So bringing in a uh, sensor closer to the face must have improved things. And we got the rest rough enough, good enough. And remember we have reference geometry on the head, so now when we're going to do the detailed scans, we are going to use this geometry to align the scan perfectly afterwards. So if the surface of the face is not perfectly captured, we still have reference geometry around to use. So we exit and we go straight to the ear scanning. So now we go to scanning, back to scan. And this is going to be the detailed scan of one ear. We start from the back because we want to capture the details of the behind the ear. But those are actually the least important details. So I'm trying to keep the camera quite close, but as you can see, the reference geometry is fully in view. This is the ear I'm going for. And I let the scanner right now to scan quite a long time. So it means it can collect and average a lot of data because the scanner resolution is pretty low, but if it samples the scene a lot, and especially now, there is, it's looking at one very narrow gap in the ear. Uh, it needs a lot of data to give you valid result. So, as you can see, we will have a good view of reference geometry, which we'll be able to stitch together with, or align together with the base scan. And now when we got a good view from the bottom, we we'll also take a good view from the top because ear has a lot of complex surfaces and you need to capture all of them because you really, really don't want to afterwards try to fill in holes on the ear surface. It's not fun and you will immediately lose precision. So now you need to decide, have you captured everything? You kind of see everything on the screen but just to be sure, I'm going to try some extra angles without ever letting go of the ear from a view so that the tracking always keeps on sampling and adding to the same data and does not try to deform the mesh. So let's hope this is good enough and we stop. Our saving scan going into viewing and immediately checking what we got. So that's what we've got. Uh -huh. I didn't scan some part of the top and I'm missing some parts at the bottom. So this is not really that good work. I think I can do better. 
So now we check for mistakes and we do once again the same thing. So we exit and we're going to do once again the same year because this one was not done very well. So we check for mistakes and now we try to improve on it. So again, we grab the data from the bottom. We start from the back because that's the least valuable data. If you don't have the back of the ear, it's not the end of the world. Back of the ear is not that important. But we try to fill in all the gaps. So this time I'm going to actually start from the top. It doesn't matter which sequence you go, as long as you never let go the ear and the reference geometry from a frame. So you always see that in every frame you see both your reference geometry and the ear. Because if it's not in the frame, you are risking to add some deformation to the scan. The fact that I actually I am trying to avoid the shoulders because head can be moving relative to the shoulders. So if I would be scanning a live person, I would try to not scan the shoulders while doing detailed scan. Sometimes see me popping into a frame, which means I got too close to the sensor but uh, it shouldn't disturb it too much. So now again I'm trying to sample a lot of data in the tightest, tightest parts. And I'm also going to rotate the sensor so that it gets a different pattern. If anything it helps. Maybe it doesn't matter, but it doesn't hurt. And again, you see reference geometry and the ear, not the shoulders and not other parts which may be deforming as a human is breathing. The fact that my hand is shaking doesn't matter. So I hope we got enough data on the ear to have a reliable mesh. Um, I will turn it around to make sure that we still got the bottom of the ear scanned well. Zooming out to get a bit of reference geometry, but hopefully it doesn't need it anymore. And we are done, I believe. Stop. Go into gallery and check what we got. Always a good idea to check. And see. I'm using iPhone 11 here, so just in case you were wondering. And that's actually very good. There's a small trivial hole at the top which can easily be fixed. The rest looks good. We have reference geometry to align for. I'm very happy with this scan. And I'm going to quickly take a scan for the other ear as well, because I will use this data for the next step. And we look at the... So now I'm using the other hand. That's the only difference. And we go. Holding it as the other hand is less comfortable for me. Oh, actually, I will not use the scan because I grabbed both ears. Okay, it doesn't matter so much, but I will restart it anyway. Okay, let's go like this. The reason I don't want to take the other side is because as I will be scanning the other or I, as I will not scan the other side almost at all, the data on that side might actually only confuse the algorithms which are going to align things. Interesting, something is jumping around. 
Uh -huh. And too close. I was too close to capture this um, reference geometry. Now I got a little bit further and it grabbed it. And now let's start rotating. Remember, you can always stop and sample more data. It only improves the averaging because the sensor is noisy. If you're going to take just one frame and look at it, it's actually quite bad data. But on average, it ends up being mostly correct. And there are even research papers comparing the quality of a scan from this simple iPhone towards professional scanners, which show that it's very much usable if the algorithm which actually does the stitching, meaning in this case this app, doesn't mess up. So I really want this scan to be good because I'm going to use it in the next tutorial part. But for Chemar there also exists high quality scan data. I cut the small part because I got a notification. This specific dummy was scanned in Aachen University, so there is online high quality data, 3D scan data for this dummy. Okay, so now I'm taking from the top to get the bottom of the year as well. And in practice, when you scan a real person, you should take extra takes even when you are happy. It's better to take one too many takes than to afterwards be disappointed that you are missing or you found some problem in your scan and there is no way to go back. And the problems can be poor alignment, uh, mainly, the main problem can be that something got deformed or you have a complex hole. So, this was a lot of sampling and we stop. It takes longer to save because it seems to have been longer scan. And we check what we've got. So, there is one trivial hole in the inside there. In the ear opening, the ear canal opening, will always be a bit of an error because uh, there's actually a hole there. So, and we will need to block it anyway because we want to simulate blocked ear canal microphones. I'm, I'm very happy with this. It looks very good. Even the top looks great. I don't think I need one more scan. It's good enough. Well, again, in practice, you should make one more scan, but for tutorial, this is perfectly good, and I will not make any extra scans. You can see reference geometry, which means I'll be able to align it quite nicely, and uh, extra detail on the face, we really don't care. If you would want to, you could grab and use some part of the face uh, from the detail scans when you merge it, but it only makes your life more complicated so it will not be necessary. So that's it. That's all the scan we need in real time. To conclude, here are a few more comments. When watching this video, you can clearly see all the details in the app view, but consider that when you actually scan, this image is visible on a phone screen at a stretched arm distance. Therefore, it is near impossible to see many details, which are so obvious when watching this video on a big screen. After a 3D scanning is complete, you need to transfer the data to your computer. 
I personally use just the basic iTunes file sharing interface to copy the STL files of the exported models using a USB cable for the iPhone. In the next video we will combine our base and detailed scan data into a complete 3D mesh for mesh to HRTF. So thank you for watching and see you next video.